All right, so firstly, thank you so much to everyone who's in my Aussie Oven merch. Like, seriously, we owe you a huge thank you because the generosity and support from all you guys has been absolutely insane. So thank you so much. But I'm here to let you all know, this is the last week to get your Aussie Arvo pre-order in for the merch. This is the last week. So we've got the hoodies, awesome bit of kit, and we've got the t-shirts, $35, $65. So aussiearvos.com.au, last week to get them in. Head over to the site, pick one up for yourself or your friend. Um, I'm out here enjoying the ground at the moment. It's been absolutely insane. Spectacular place. But anyway, I'll let you go back to the video. Enjoy Liam's turbo setup. Have a good one and enjoy the video. Oh yeah, we're looking real sweet. Alright, ready? Yeah. Ready. Oh yeah, that goes a lot better. Alright, so we're back. We've made a little bit more progress. We got that last pain in the ass stud out with the help of the right angle drill bit. So this thing was just invaluable. Like, you wouldn't have been able to do it really without it. So. That was a lifesaver. So doing that, and then with the easy out, we're able to get the stud out. Put all the new studs in, they're all torqued. Just put them in dry, didn't put any sort of anti seize or Loctite or anything on them. Also, I for the air box, when it sits in, it doesn't actually, the face of it doesn't, of the intake side, didn't sit flush with the guard. So using some of the old intake piping we've just siliconed an extension so that this, this will sit inside the hole in the guard. And then we're also gonna add a bit of sticky back foam rubber type stuff around it that'll sort of hopefully make a seal on the inside. So about to put the manifold on first. I got new gaskets. These aren't genuine. The genuine ones are like, they're like a multi-layer uh, metal gasket that like compress, but they're like 35 bucks for a single one. So it would have cost me like near 200 bucks to do the whole thing. So this is a set of aftermarket ones for 25. So these will do the trick. I'm not gonna put any gasket go on them just because if I have to take it off, I don't wanna have to clean it all and everything. And I've heard that if you've got a gasket, it should be fine. So that also got all the washers to reuse for the manifold and new copper nuts to go on. Yeah, so we'll slap these on and then the manifold can go on. Um, also had to make up a T3 gasket because I couldn't find one, it's super cheap. And I just needed one, so I just bought gasket material and cut it out, it's pretty rough but it'll do the job, so. All right, and then, wash this. Just put a bit of um, anti-seize on the studs in case I have to rip these all up again in the future. And then these are all our copper uh, nuts. So hopefully they'll go on nice. I think there's a torque pattern for exhaust manifold as well. I think you go from the center out like you do with the other one. All right, it's so all the exhaust um, nuts are torqued. So I suppose next we'll just test fit the turbo, we'll see how everything lines up and then we can start getting an idea of how water lines and oil lines are gonna sit. So let's do that. All right, do it loose, but that's pretty much how it's sitting. So we're just looking at how, so these um, water lines are gonna have to be cut and we're gonna put barb fittings. I was actually considering at the start just cutting them and trying to flare the ends and sleeving a hose straight over it. But I've heard people say that, I don't know, it might, not be the best seal and because it's like high pressure system you really want it to like seal well yeah we're probably we're going to end up cutting these and, and brazing a barb on and then that'll be the yeah for the coolant feed so this is our coolant return so that bolts on down in there and then these clamps are used to hold it to there and so we're pretty much going to cut that there or so put a barb on and then just run the hose straight from the tee to there so that'll that one will be easy to do literally cut it just before that bend sort of thing so that should be easy, that one. All right, so we're gonna change the length for the oil line. I got it long on purpose because I wasn't exactly sure how much I was gonna need. The guy from Pertec gave me uh, another olive so I can chop it down and re-fit uh, the end fitting. So it's a dash four hose with four AN end fittings. For now, I'll just quickly zip this at the length that we've marked. Yeah, so the first steps, you just gotta flare the braided steel away from the Teflon inside. Yeah, so then in the skinny end, you put that around your Teflon. You pretty much want it to come all the way up and seat on a, there's a little lip on the inside. So you just gotta push it as square as you can until that Teflon comes all the way up. And then you pretty much, obviously that will sleeve over. And there we should have a shortened oil line. All right, so now we can see if that fits better. No, that'll be perfect. So I'm just gonna chuck the oil drain fitting. So yeah, three quarter inch barb. I can't remember what the thread is, but that just goes straight into the fitting that we've got uh, brazed into the sump. So I'll quickly just thread that in. I'll, I'll put a bit of um, thread sealer on it as well. And then we can sort of plumb up the oil return line. Hopefully that's not gonna be too bad of an angle for the hose, it should be fine. Or the other two. It'd probably be right. 
No, I just, yeah, just let it go. Yeah, so we're just chucking the um, drain hose on. Um, we just cut that down to length and put some hose clamps on it and it all fits good. Um, oil feed's done. So that's the one thing to note. A lot of people don't, um, like, you could actually call it done at this point if you weren't water cooling it. A lot of people just oil cool these because they did actually, the non-intercooled models came out with water cooling in the early GUs and then in the TI models and the later GUs, they um, ditched the water cooling altogether, just ran them oil cooled. So you could do that, um, many people do. I'm only running the water cooling just because I've heard it's good for like, if you do like a big drive and then you shut off your car and your turbo's real hot, the water naturally, um, I forgot the word for it, but it like naturally circulates and keeps cooling the turbo even when the pump's not going. So I just heard it's good to keep, sort of prolong the life of the turbo a little bit. But I have heard people say that like taking that heat out of your turbo through the coolant can heat up your motor a tiny bit more because it's that extra heat source and turbos get really hot. See how it goes, but it should be good. This is the uh, intake pipe to the compressor housing. So that bolt's on the front like so. All right, so we're going pretty good with putting the whole turbo on. We just got to, for the water line, still got to get the barbs braced on. We're just waiting on um, a friend to do that for us. Um, so in the meantime, we're going to plumb the airbox up. So pretty much where this sleeves into the guard, it's not a tight fit. So we're just going to wrap some sticky back, like foam, rubber type stuff around it just to hopefully give it a better seal. We'll chuck that on, then we can mount this in. It's so convenient how the whole, like everything just bolts in. Like I got the whole set up off a GU and everything fits. Other than, I, I didn't have, well, it would have been, you know what it would have been the ultimate, if I had the bit of plastic that went from the air box to there, that would have made it way easier as well, but. Yeah, no, but it's pretty good, pretty good that the GU, so yeah, for free to reference for anyone, yeah, so the um, ZD30 or GU TD42 boxes bolt straight into a GQ, the holes are already there. Makes it pretty easy. It's a pretty good seal. Better, it'll be better than it was anyway. Yeah. 66 bucks. 66, 68, because the 90 degree one was only like 37, yeah. and the 45 was 66 bucks. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> so expensive. Uh, I'll show what I've got. Um, picked up some silicon joiners for, I've got to get from the air box to the intake for the turbo. So yeah, just got a 45 degree, this is three and a half inch to three inch, so three and a half inch to three inch pipe. And then I've got 90 degree, three inch to two and a half inch, which is that's two and a half inch there. If I, ideally you'd have, want the bit of plastic for the GU that just is the factory fit. That'll make life easier, but got to work with what we got. So I got these. All right, so I just diced off a bit of the end of that silicon joiner because um, we didn't need it as long as it was. So this, it's going to be a tight fit. I already know that, but this should go on to this. And then that'll need to match my hose that come. It should sort of work. That'll work. Oh yes, that's so satisfying. And then yeah, I'll obviously have to cut this down to size. Get a bit of that in the middle. Oh, I'm so glad that works. I was really worried that it wasn't gonna line up at all, but that'll, that'll work fine. You know, you know your car looks aftermarket looks modified and you got silicon joiners. <laughs> looks, looks hardly like kinked at all. Like that's yeah. already, because you look at the size of the intake down here, it narrows down so yeah. much that you're only actually, like the fact that this is three inch here is sort of useless in a way, because it only needs to be as big as what the inlet is on the turbo. And so the inlet to the turbo down here, the smallest point, I'd probably guess it's two inches. It's tiny. And so to have like three inch here and say through this corner, if it drops down to say 2.75 through the corner and well, and then down to two and a half here, like that's, plenty of air still getting through to the motor because the size of the turbo is only so small. So yeah, I reckon that'll be plenty of air. Oh yeah, we're looking real sweet. All right, what's next? Oh, it's literally just the crossover pipe and water lines. And then I've got to put fluids in it. Oh, I've got to put all the sensors in as well. All right, so we've got the air box plumbed to the intake for the turbo. That should be all sweet. We're still waiting on the, still got to do the braze the water lines. But the other thing I can do, I just got to chuck on this little piece. This comes off the compressor housing uh, into the crossover pipe. Got a gasket for it. Should go on pretty easy. Yeah, I can cut it just there. So we've got the 
Um, fittings brazed onto our water lines, so that's sort of the end result we're working with. So as you can see, that barb has just been brazed to it. They carp a treat, so now we can mount them up. And then, um, yeah, once we've got the water lines on, that means we'll be able to uh, put the coolant back in, um, which is good. And then we can also, we'll have to still put on like, yeah, crossover pipes got to go on. And then we'll still have to do things like sensors. We're gonna have to sort out a temporary exhaust still, just before I can get a system made up. So, but before any of that, let's go get these on now. I don't know, it's time to get on anymore. Alright, so we've got to run this top one. So banjo bolt. That's easy. Alright, so we've just pretty much finished up, well, almost finished up, putting everything together. So we've uh, whacked on the uh, feed and drain for the coolant lines from the turbo. They're both plumbed up now. We've also gone and put on the crossover pipe. That's all plumbed up now. And so we're pretty much ready to, well, before we can put fluids back in, so oil and coolant, we have to, we've got a few open ports uh, for sensors. Alright, so when it comes to sensors and gauges and everything for monitoring the engine, I actually did a lot of research into finding something that I liked. Now, you're probably all familiar with the traditional style 52 millimeter gauges, and I was considering them for a bit, but I was looking for something that could do more um, and not take up so much room and cost so much, stuff like that. And so I actually found um, online these guys at uh, Just Race Parts, and um, I reached out to them and they hooked me up with the uh, 14 in 1 multi gauge, which is a digital. Uh, gauge and um, so I've got a whole bunch of sensors here the ones I'm going to be using so we've got um, oil pressure we've got uh, water temp we've got EGT we've got boost and there's a bunch of others but we'll dive into that later so for now we're just going to get these sensors put them in where we've got the spots for them so that way we can um, start looking at fluids all right so we've got the EGT here now these are uh, actually really high-end EGT that um, just race parts um, supply so these, they've done a lot of you know, real world testing and putting these into practice to try to get something that works really well. And just for an example, they've even got like plugs on the ends which can make them easy to remove from a place if need be, things like that. Um, so in terms of how these guys mount, we've just got our 1 8 MPT fitting here, um, which comes with it obviously. And so this screws into your um, dump pipe or wherever you've got your port for your EGT sensor. So that'll screw in and then it works with olive fittings and so you have a top nut or like clamping nut which you slide over and then you put your olive fittings on, so they just sit on there. And then obviously we have to screw this into the dump and then when you stick the probe back through here, those um, olive fittings clamp up against his, against the fitting and then it clamps the probe in place so it won't come out pretty much. So yeah, they're great design. Yeah, we'll bang it on in there. Also for the, cause the um, port that was in the dump pipe that I got with the turbo, um, it's a little bit loose, the thread, so I'm actually just gonna whack a little a bit of this um, exhaust cement on there just to sort of help seal it up because I don't want it to be leaking um, fumes into the engine bay and heat. All right, so we're just gonna leave the sensors in their ports. We're not actually wiring them up just yet. Um, but it's actually really easy to do because all the sensors pretty much, they all come with their own little uh, plug on the end which goes into the back of this box. So this is like a control, I don't know, it's basically the computer, I suppose. And so all your inputs go in and your outputs to your little um, OLED screen. And so that's really easy to wire up in the cab, but we'll be doing that once we've got everything in and all the oils in and everything like that. Another thing no, like makes it really easy to put everything in is because all the, they all come with the sensor and then that is then connected to your cord. So it makes it really easy to put all these in because they're nice and short, you don't have to worry about a massive long wire that you've got to twist as you're turning your fitting. So this is the water temperature, so we're gonna put this in the uh, hole that we tapped into the thermostat housing. So this is also, yeah, 1 8 NPT fitting, so it should just screw straight on in, hopefully. Oh, that should be right. Feel on top. Ah, that's good, that's neat as. That's, like a, that's a good spot to put it, like nice and neat, because I've, see, I've seen people do it into the top of the thermostat housing, you're not meant to do it there because the whole idea of the thermostat is it only lets through the hottest air. And so, yeah, that's, I suppose that's great for when the car's running fine, but in the rare case that say your thermostat were to get um, shut or stuck, like um, open or closed, sorry, 
then if it was stuck closed, no water temperature is going to get up to your sensor. So you wouldn't actually know that your car's overheating. So don't put it there. All right. <laughs> yeah, again, I was almost, I was going to wind it in with it connected, but then I realized that there's a clip, so you can literally just wind that straight in and she's good to go. So we're going to, so this is our oil pressure. So yeah, I've got this teed into the factory oil pressure sender spot. So it should be no worries. I put a tiny little bit of thread seal on there just because probably could do with it. So let's see how it goes in. The uh, last sensor to go in for us is boost. So got a bit of boost line here. Very similar to the way the oil pressure sensor would work. It's just got a, um, a plug that's obviously unpluggable, or sensor, sorry, that's on a plug. So you can unplug that. And um, so for until we wire this up, I'm just gonna plug the boost sensor in the end just so the line's plugged. There's our boost sensor. And so if I stick that in the end there, now we're blocked. So now all the magical unicorns can't escape from the... <laughs> Intake pipe. <laughs> All right, so with that, everything is now, dare I say it, finished. We just got to chuck the second battery back in and hook that up, but we should, and then, oh, obviously we've got to put fluids in there. We don't want to make that mistake. So quickly fill her up with some uh, oil and um, we'll have to do the coolant system. That'll probably need a bit of a bleed. Oh, and we're also gonna, uh, when we're doing the uh, oil, I'm actually gonna feed some oil straight into the oil line straight away. So that way I know when it first turns over, there's already oil uh, around that journal bearing because it's probably pretty dried out. So yeah, so we'll pour some oil down the oil feed line, obviously top up the car and then we'll do the corn as well. And then we'll be ready to turn her over. You excited? Turn her over. Yeah, it should be good. Well, I'm actually, I'm actually more excited to have the gauges in there to see like, I want to see like what it says. So, but yeah, I think it'll be cool. So. Yeah, let's do it. What are we filling it with for all the people we want to know? Uh, this time I've gone for a Castrol uh, RX diesel, not super diesel, because it was cheaper and because I've heard that it's pretty much the same, so I'm sure it will be fine. Yeah, not too fast. Oh, I don't have to go too fast. <laughs> there we go. NA graveyard. Yeah, if anyone wants some NA TD42 parts, you're welcome to come by. Alright, so we're done in terms of it should run. So we've got oil, um, we've got coolant. Oh, I've got to find the radiator cap. <laughs> <laughs> we put oil straight into the turbo feed line just to make sure that there was some oil in there so that it wasn't dry. Um, so we just squirted a bit in there with a hand pump. Um, I just, yeah, reattached the oil feed fitting. And so now we should be good to go. Everything's plumbed up. So we're gonna roll it outside and start it because it'll probably cough and sputter a bit because I changed the fuel filter. Oh, I gotta put the, I don't have to worry about the second battery yet. Nah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I gotta find the radiator. You might have to help me. Hang on. Is your hand brake on? Yeah, that'll be right, man. Turbo setup. Alright. So, what are we gonna do, Lane? Just give it a start? Well, we're gonna see if it's. Well, the, yeah, the fuel solenoids. Are. Okay, so the fuel solenoid for the pump's disconnected, so that's gonna cut off fuel and essentially the car should just turn over and that's gonna allow us to build oil pressure and um, just cycle a tiny bit of cooling around and that before we actually turn it over. So we'll just cycle that for a little bit. Hopefully the battery's got plenty of charge. After we've done that, then we can put the fuel stop solenoid, plug it back in and then it should have fuel and then we can start it. And then as soon as we start it, we're just gonna look all around for leaks and let it idle. All right, ready to go? Ready to go. Yeah, because we're just going to crank it to get a bit of... Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's drag. Yeah. The battery oh. seems like it's uh, Hang on a minute. not plugging that anyway. So, Which one is it? Just a plug right there off the stop solenoid. See oh, the wires okay, going to the stop solenoid. Uh, so the pin drops down, the fuel can't get past. Oh, yeah. so you oh it's here. done, is it? Yeah, it's done, so it's oh. ready to go. Sure, it should. Should, oh. should really start. Press straight away. Alright, ready? Yeah. Ready. Um, the f oil feed fitting where the elbow is on the oil line is leaking. So, neutral. Oh, it's better now. We'll let it run for 
for a bit, make sure it's not still leaking, and then once it's warmed up again, we can give it a rev and see what happens. What was wrong with the actual? Um, uh, yeah, so pretty much, because I bought, so the flanges I bought for the turbo, they were just like eBay spec alloy ones, so they're pretty cheap. The fitting I bought from Kertech, the elbow fitting, was too long. So say like that's your male thread that was on the flange, and that's your fitting. It was going on and then bottoming out on the bottom of the flange, and so the, the pressure, where the um, like the angled like where pressure fits against each other at the top, they weren't actually contacting. They were because it was bottoming out at the bottom. So we chopped off the length of the um, female AN fitting and shortened it down so it actually pulls up tight. And so yeah, now it's all good. No leaks. No leaks. Sounds like a turbo diesel. Oh, this is the first drive of it being turbocharged. Yeah. So yeah, so. We're not gonna, we haven't got any gauges installed, so we're not gonna do anything stupid. We're just gonna drive it and see how it goes. And obviously, I'll probably find it won't be that powerful because it hasn't got any fuel to support all the extra air. So. <laughs> you can hear it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the first gear change. I'm looking forward to <laughs> going past the pub. <laughs> It goes so much better, I reckon. And that's with no fuel. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah, that goes a lot better. <laughs> and it, it actually, it actually is pretty much quieter than the old exhaust too. Funnily enough. Yeah. Such a different sound, don't you reckon? Oh, it's crazy the way turbos really do change how they sound. Oh, yeah. Are we keen to? Yeah, I'm really keen to put the gauges in. Yeah. I really want to see doing. like what it's doing, yeah. like yeah. what sort of boosts it's making. Then we can start doing fuel stuff like that. Yeah. See, make sure EGT is real good. Yeah. I, I reckon it does have a bit more pull at the moment. Yeah. Obviously, it's not running as good as it will because we haven't adjusted fuel yet. But. All right. It definitely feels, like, it's funny because the problem is when you do a job like this is you don't drive the car for like a week. Yeah, so you always yeah. forget how it feels. Yeah, yeah. But, and because I drove dad's car in between as well, that sort of throws yeah. you off a bit. No, I definitely feel like that. Um, yeah, I'll be very, very keen to throw gauges in just so you can monitor everything. Actually it sounds like a TD now. <laughs> like, it used to not, like not many people know what NATD sound like, but they sound pretty different. Yeah. But now it just sounds like a TD, if you like, like they all do. Yeah. It'll sound, It'll sound completely different with a yeah. three inch yeah. through pipe. It, completely different. Because all those, you'll notice now, it sounds very like, you can almost hear each cylinder. Yeah. Whereas once you've got the three inch, by the time that sound travels all the way through, um, yeah, that, it becomes more one It'll, singular yeah. tone. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm glad this has happened. <laughs> it's weird how, I always feel like that with projects like, you think, like you think it leading up to it feels like forever, and then all of a sudden you're just, just happening, it's just yeah. doing it. Yeah. No, very good. <laughs> all right guys, so that's the turbo wrapped up. I reckon it, it obviously turned out awesome. We've still got a lot to do though, so gauge is still got to come, we've still got to tune it, which is the main thing, and obviously in order to tune, we need the gauge output, so we, yeah, so we don't cook the bastard. So pretty much that, still got to go three inch exhaust, because we can't run it out of the dump pipe forever, but that's, once we do that, then we we'll, should be smooth sailing. So, you know, let us know how how you thought it all went, we've still got more to come, but yeah, turbo patrol, finally. All right, so remember, this is your final week to pre-order Aussie Arrows merch, so if you want some, head over to aussieavos.com.au and pick yourself up some merch. Cheers, guys, have a good one.